Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for all your people who are here. And thank you for those who are connected and they're listening. And I pray, Lord, anywhere there, the same blessing you pour upon us here, you pour upon them in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, you quicken your people, energize your people, refresh your people, revive your people that your people will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Well, thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church say beautiful amen. God bless you. Consider we're coming to Nehemiah chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 14. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 14. Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. Remember me, O my God. The Lord will remember you. Look at verse 22. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Here is the word again. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this also and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. Come to the last verse of the last chapter, verse 31. And for the wood offering at times appointed, and for the first fruits, here is the word again, remember. Remember me, O oh my God, for good. Say that with me. Remember me, O oh my God, for good. The Lord will remember you. Chapter 5 of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 19. Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 19. Think upon me. That still means remember me. Think upon me, my God, for good. According to all that I have done for these people. Your labor will not be in vain. Everything you've done for the Lord will be remembered. A little cup of cold water that you give to a neighbor, that you give to a brother, that you give to a child, that you give to a member of the body of Christ, that you give to the church, the Lord will remember you. As we look at Nehemiah as a person, and we look at Nehemiah as a book, and we look at Nehemiah as a reformer, as we look at Nehemiah as a builder, there was reason for him to say, Lord, remember me. From the beginning of the book to the end of the book, it shows a man, a man of conviction, he'll be remembered. A man of concern, he must be remembered. A man of compassion, he must be remembered. A man of consecration, he must be remembered. Is a man of courage, a man like that must be remembered. A man of constancy, he must be remembered. A man of clear conscience, such a man cannot be forgotten. God is looking for such a man today. Is looking for such a woman today. A man, a woman that will stand up and stand up for something. A man or a woman that will stand up and stand up for Jesus. A man or a woman that will stand up with constancy, with courage, and with commitment and consecration. If you are that man, if you are that woman, God's mark will be upon your life. You will not be forgotten. 
every step you take, every message you give, every prayer you pray, every good deed you do, every reform you make, every alteration, every correction you make, and every pass you take in your life, God is going to remember you for good. But you see sinners, backsliders, apostates, they have nothing to be remembered for. They have forgotten forever a man like Achan, a man like Absalom, a woman like Athaliah, a man like Ahab, a woman like Jezebel, a man like Cain, a man like Balaam, a man like Esau, a man like Judas Iscariot, forgotten forever. You will not be like that. And you must be thinking about this important thing. What will heaven remember me for? What will God remember me for? What will the angels remember me for? What will the church of the living God remember me for? What will my neighbors remember me for? What will you in particular be remembered for I'm talking to you on the subject living to be remembered by God forever living to be remembered by God forever three points number one passionate men remembered passive men forgotten passionate men remembered those who are anxious for something, passionate for something, thirsty for something, purposeful in something, progressive in something, and they have impact in their world. Passionate men remembered, perceive men forgotten. Number two, prayerful members renewed, prayerless members frustrated prayerful members renewed if you have something high you are aiming for if you have something far you're reaching out for if you have something that is going to last forever that your heart is panting after you must be a man a woman of prayer because that thing is beyond you that goal is beyond you that achievement is be beyond you and so for you to reach forth and for you to catch and for you to touch and for you to achieve you'll be an achiever you'll be a conqueror you'll be an overcomer this world will know that you came to this world at such a time like this. In the history book of the world, when everything is compiled together by the hand of the Almighty God, your name will be there. And so if that is going to take place, you must have a power, grace, strength, that goes beyond you and you can only get that by prayer prayerful members renewed prayerless members frustrated point number three you know in this life there are people that start something they cannot finish I'm not talking about you I said I'm not talking about you they cannot perspire they cannot pursue. They cannot have a mind that says, if I'm going to die on this, I will die for something good. Some people die lazy. Some people die idle. Some people die sleeping throughout life. Some people die, they don't mean anything, they don't have anything, they don't perceive anything, they don't persevere in anything. You will not die like that. 
but pursuing, preserving, persevering, and then until your last breath, you're still doing good. My brother, I said, until your last minute moment on earth, you are still doing good. And you go from that good and you go to God, you will never be forgotten. Point number three, persevering messengers rewarded. Perverted messengers forgotten forever. Persevering messengers rewarded. I'm talking about you today. I came today only to talk about you. Your life must become different. You must make a mark in this life you are living. God will never forget you. And we will never forget you. Persevering messengers rewarded. Perverted messengers forsaken forever. Number one. Tell me number one I feel as if this is you. God bless you. You didn't say amen for that one. Passionate men remembered. Perceived men forgotten. Converted. Consecrated. Courageous saints and servants of God are passionate. They're purified. And they're purifying too. But passive prayerless, polluted members are careless, they're cold, and they're easily corrupted. They do nothing special. Their lives are so-so. Their lives are like dull, dreary, nothing exciting, nothing special, nothing spiritual. Nothing sacrificial to be remembered for, but a man like Nehemiah, a man like Nehemiah, a woman like Nehemiah, passionate, intentional, intensive, active for righteousness, for holiness, for the faith was delivered unto the saints. For God's glory, passionate for true revival in the church, passionate for the genuine salvation of sinners, passionate for constant readiness for heaven. There's no way such a person can be forgotten. Even sinners will remember you. Saints will remember you. Heaven will remember you. And the earth will remember you. Let's look at this man we're talking about. I'm looking at Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1, passionate man, passionate man, passionate man. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4. And it came to pass when I had these words that I sat down, I wept. He heard the word about the condition of the people of God in Jerusalem, Judah. And he said, when I heard, I didn't just pass it over my shoulder. When I heard, I didn't allow it to be like water on the dog's back. When I heard, I sat down. I must think about this. I sat down. I must meditate on this. I sat down. I must do something about this. I sat down. Somebody must rise up and build the walls of Jerusalem. I sat down. I wept. I mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, and that keepeth covenant and mercy 
for them that love him and observe his commandments let thine ear now be attentive and thine ears open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee now, day and night, day and night, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and I confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. You see the man passionate. He heard the word of God and he took that word to God in prayer. And he said, somebody must do something and if there's no other person, here am I. I volunteer myself. Passionate. Look at chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. Chapter 2, verse 3. And said unto the king, let the king live forever. Why should not the count, my countenance be sad when the city and the place of my father's sepulchre lies waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? It says, if the house is burning, how can I be happy? If the gates are burnt, how can I be happy? If the walls are defiled and destroyed and devastated, desolate place how can i be happy his passion showed on his face his passion showed in his tone his passion showed in his life verse for then the king said unto me what dost thou make request for what dost thou make request so i prayed to the god of heaven and i said unto the king if it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah. I pray about it, and then I surrender my life. I surrender myself. I'm not praying that other people who are less privileged will go and do it. Have a good job here. Have a good standing here. And I have a good appointment here. Let another person who is jobless, another person who is uh, kind of not educated, I'm a first class brain. I'm gone in for my master's degree. I'm a first class material. I'm gone in for my postgraduate doctorate degree. And so let another person who is jobless and who has nothing to do, let him volunteer. Cheer. But it says, I'm ready to give up my position. My passion consumes me. My zeal consumes me. I must see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. And so he said, and I said to the king, if it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah and to, unto the city of my father's sepulchers, that I may build it. You will be a builder. You'll be a reformer. You'll be a champion. You'll be a passionate man, a passionate child of God in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17, chapter 2, verse 17. Then said I unto them, you see the distress that we are in. It is, you, see, you see the distress that you are in. I'm coming from an exalted place. I'm coming from the palace. I'm coming from a well-known place of high honor. You see the distress that you are in? No, he identified, he internalized. He said, this is our problem together. You see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Come, and let us build. Come. Are you coming? Come. I said, are you coming? You will join this concourse army of the Lord in Jesus' name. If soldiers go into the battlefield, if they're careless, cold, 
non-challenged, unconcerned. They not move the way they ought to move. It is when the excitement is there, when the passion is there, when the desire is there. We're going and we're going to conquer the enemy. We're going and we're going to retrieve all the lost ground. We're going and we're going to preserve the territory for the people of our land. It is then they will rise up and with passion, with excitement and zeal, they'll march on. I'm like that. I said I am like that. I said you are like that. Let us build up the wall of Jerusalem that we be no more a reproach. I'm coming to chapter 3. And I'm coming to the latter part of verse 15. Chapter 3, and we're coming to the latter part, reading from verse 3. It says, and the bars thereof, and the wall of the pool of Shiloh, by the king's garden, unto the stairs that go down from the city of David. He said, you know what? Even the city of David, look at it now as a ramshackle shed. Look at it now, devastated and destroyed. I will remember how King David gave all his life. He put his life in his hand to bring the joy and the victory and the strength of Israel back. And the place now is dilapidated. We're going to do something. You are going to do something. We cannot allow the church of the living God to continue like this, run down, and then run over, and overcome, and conquered by every little rat, and every little serpent, and every little cockroach. No, we're going to wipe the dust off. We're going to bring revival, renewal, back to the church of the living God in Jesus name it shall be done by men and women boys and girls who are passionate for the things of the Lord chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 6 chapter 4 verse 6 so built we the wall so built we the wall a day did not go by we contributed something a moment did not go by we did something and not, there was no time to waste and all the wall was joined together until the half thereof for the people had a mind to work passionate people they have a mind to work you're not begging them you're not bribing them you're not always motivating them you're not always smiling you don't have to give some carrot. You don't have to give even a stick. You don't have to give anything. The fire is from the inside of them. The power is from heaven. And the passion is already in every vein, every drop of blood in their body. And they have a mind to walk. Verse 7, But it came to pass that were in Shambhalat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were built, were made up, and that the breaches began to be stopped. Then they were very wroth. Passionate men, passionate women, passionate boys and girls, passionate people, they don't care for the anger of Satan. Anger of Sambalaj, anger of Tobiah, anger of the Arabians. We're moving on. If you are part of this team, I said, we're moving on. Verse 8, they conspired, all of them together, to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God. They wanted to come and stop it. We're unstoppable. 
He wanted to come and destroy the work were indestructible. They wanted to come and make us afraid we are fearless. Am I talking for you? Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Look at verse 13. Therefore, set I in the lower places, behind the wall, and on the higher places, I, even I, search the people after their families with their swords and their spears and their bows. And I looked and rose up. You know something about Nehemiah? It wasn't something to send others to the field and he will be taking a nap at home. He was not somebody telling other people to sacrifice. And he will be sleeping at home. Passionate people don't sleep while the work is still there. While the assignment is still there. While the duty is still there. And then sending other people to go and work. No, he said, verse 14, and I looked, and I rose up, and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, and fight for your sons, and fight for your daughters and fight for your wives and fight for your houses and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to naught all your enemies will be disappointed their conspiracy will be brought to nothing and that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone to his work. Everyone to his work. Am I talking about you? Everyone to his work. When last did you attend your own house fellowship? When last did you attend the meeting that was made for your area of work? When last did you look at the work you were doing, doing for the glory of God and improve yourself? Verse 21, it says, So we labored in the work, half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, let everyone with his servant lodge within Jerusalem. He was a commanding officer. And he was very sure that the people were connected with him, associated with him. And they were going to do what he commanded them for the glory of the Lord, for the progress of the work. That in the night, they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. So, neither I, I wasn't lazy. Neither I, I wasn't indolent. Neither I, I wasn't uh, resting, taking my rest. Neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving except that everyone put them off for washing. We meant business, we were committed to the meeting and to the thing we needed to do, we'll be committed like that. Let me hear your amen. amen. Chapter 5, verse 1. And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Jews. You see some people, while they put their cake on the stove, one side is overburnt. 
the other side is wrong. They do not have a comprehensive understanding of the work they are called to do. You see, Nehemiah, he had to deal with the enemies. He was passionate. He had to deal with the building of the walls. It was dutiful. But now, the moral life of the people. Some people complained that they were being oppressed by others. And that complaint came to him. So look at verse 6. And I was very angry when I heard their cry. And these words, then I consulted with myself. I wasn't consulting with compromisers. I wasn't contending. I wasn't consulting with uh, conspirators. I wasn't a uh, kind of uh, consulting with the cruel oppressors. I consulted with myself. And I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them, Ye exert usury every one of his brother. And I set a great assembly against them. That man was passionate. And he told them what they shouldn't be doing. And he extracted a promise from them that they will not continue to oppress the people. Come to verse 12. Then they said, we will restore them and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. The oppressors repented. The cruel corruptors repented. And those who were putting burden, unbearable burden on other people, they couldn't stand before this passionate man. They repented. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Let's come to chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. Passionate man. Every day of his life, passionate. Every chapter in the book, passionate. He was up and doing. His passion, his zeal, knew no rest. And he continued, chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when Sambalat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. The Sambalat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come. We're well, seeing that fighting you doesn't work. Let's unite together. Or seeing that antagonizing you will not stop you. The stick will not stop you. Let's give you some carrot so that we can stop you. They said, come, let us meet together in some one village, one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work. Are you doing any work? I said, are you doing any work? How great is the work you're doing? You will show by how fast, how excited, how uplifted, and how Happy you are in doing the work. If you are complaining, you are grudging, you are saying, I must go again. They expect me to do this now. I'm tired. I feel like I should have gone to sleep now. If you are like that, you don't have the understanding you are doing a great work. But I am doing a great work. I said, I am doing a great work. Say it if you are sure. He said, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come 
unto you. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come unto you? Look at verse 11. And I said, Shall such a man as I flee, you will not run away from your post of duty. You want to take your wife away and then you're so afraid you're on. That will not be you. They want to take your husband away and then you flee your own. That will not be you in Jesus' name. See, they're taking your daughter into the world, taking your son into the world. And then you turn your face the other way and you flee. It will not happen to you. There's any fight to fight your fight for your family, for your son and for your daughter. And for the members of the church, they want to bring pollution, they want to bring corruption, and they want to silence the church and crush the church. And then you are such a coward, such a jellyfish, such an amphibian. You turn the other way. I don't want to fight. Shame on you. Help me tell them, shame on them. But when you rise up, in the energy and power of the Spirit of God, when you rise up in the fire of the Holy Ghost, burning with you, you are like Nehemiah, you will always be remembered. Silent people will not be remembered. Quiet people will not be remembered. And backsliding people will not be remembered. But those who are up and doing, those who say, this is my father's work and this is my father's glory, whatever it will take, I will pay the price. You'll be remembered in Jesus' name. Verse 11, And I said, Shall such a man as I flee, and who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Verse 15, so the wall was finished. Amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. If you are always running away when the heat is on, if you collapse when the pressure is great, if you flee when the enemies are approaching, and then you're peeping through the crack in your wall, are they left or are they still there? And if you see they have retreated, they have left, then you come back. Then when you see that the enemies are coming again, then you run away, you will never finish what has been appointed unto you. But when you are there, I am there. I said I am there. In the heat of the day, in the cold of the night, under the pressure, under the persecution, under the trial, and even with the tempters and temptresses coming, and even with the corruptors coming, and you are always there, and you set your face like a flint. Those are the kind of people that finish. I am one of the number. I said I am one of the number. Passionate men remembered. Verse 15, so the wall was finished in the 20 and fifth day of the month Elul in 52 days. Chapter 8, a lot of verses, but let me just uh, shorten this and read verses 8 and 9. Chapter 8, verse 8, so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. You know what's happening here? Talk about building the wall. Our man Nehemiah is there. Talk about reforming the, the moral life of the people. Our man Nehemiah is there. And talk about reading the scriptures to the whole congregation. 
lifting up the standard of righteousness and holiness our man Nehemiah is there verse 8 so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading and Nehemiah somebody shout Nehemiah and Nehemiah, which is the Tashash, Tashata, that is the governor, and Ezra, the priest, the scribe, and the Levites taught the people, taught the people, taught the people. Nehemiah did not say, I'm a builder, I'm not a teacher. I am a reformer, I'm not a teacher. I am a prayer warrior, I'm not a teacher. I am a governor, I am not a teacher. They taught the people. And it says, when he taught the people, in that uh, verse 9, they said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor we. The people had the word, they were convicted. And they started weeping and mourning. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And as we go on throughout to the end, chapter 9, chapter 10, now we come to chapter 13. Chapter 13, passionate men. Remember, chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 15. 13, 15, in those days saw I in Judah, some treading wine presses on the Sabbath day and bringing in sheaves and laden asses as also wine, grapes, figs and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day and I testify against them in the they were in the sold victuals. Verse 16. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all manner of ware, and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah. You know, there are people that say, that's a minor thing. The people, they need to buy food. And they need to feed themselves. And those strangers are bringing them. And we are not the people preparing that food. We're not the people doing that. But they are bringing them. They turn a blind eye to that thing. I will not say, I see. Not Nehemiah. They were polluting the day of the Lord that had been consecrated for them. And the Lord had told them, they shall not be done. When Nehemiah saw that, although nobody was contending, and nobody was confronting them, verse 17, then I contended with the nobles of Judah, and said unto them, what evil sin is this that ye do? And profane the Sabbath day. Did not your fathers doors and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. And I came, it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded the gates should be shut. There are people that complain, yes, we know it's not right, but they can't do anything. They are afraid of the people. What will they say? How will they look at me? They're looking for the favor of people, and they forget the danger of falling into the hands of a mighty God who is a consuming fire. And I charge that they should not be open all through till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set I in the gates. I appointed some of my servants, you stand there, you stay there, you take that post that 
there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants and sailors of all kinds of where lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. Then I testified against them and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time forth came no more, they came no more on the Sabbath. Passion, passion will be passionate in Jesus' name. Give me the churches, amen. amen. Point number two, prayerful members renewed. Prayerless members frustrated. Those who are prayerless, they are, they are frustrated. Why? Without prayer, there's no progress. Without prayer, there is no peace. Without prayer, there's no purity. Without prayer, there is no power. Without prayer, there is no perseverance. Without prayer, there is no performance. Without prayer, there is no possession. Without prayer, no courage. Without prayer, no consistency. Without prayer, no conquering. The prayerless are powerless. On the persecution, they are powerless. In the face of opposition, they are powerless. In trials and temptation, they are powerless. That's why, because they are prayerless, they are frustrated. They are fruitless. They are faceless. They are fearful. They are feeble and frail under the fire and the fury of the persecutor. But Nehemiah, Nehemiah was a man of prayer and a man of power, a man of passion. Nehemiah prevailed through prayer, constant praying, short prayer, quick prayer, prompt praying, private prayer, public prayer, sustained prayer. His habit of prayer brought the harvest of possibilities. His habit of prayer brought a harvest of possibilities. Let's look at Nehemiah again from chapter 1 and see the prayerful man that he said, remember me, a man of prayer will be remembered by heaven. The sea, the ocean will not drown you. The fire of the world will not burn you. The fire of Nebuchadnezzar will not burn you up in Jesus' name. I see you today, I'll see you tomorrow stronger. Nehemiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 4. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I said, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. I wasn't so busy. I prayed before the God of heaven. The duty at the palace did not close my mouth. I prayed before the God of heaven. Look at verse 6. Let thine ear now be attentive, and then eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, O Lord, I beseech thee, let now then ear be attentive unto the prayer of thy servant. 
chapter 2 verse 4 in chapter 2 verse 4 then the king said unto me for what does that make request a quick prayer so I prayed to the God of heaven he didn't say I cannot pray now let me just use my brain let me just use my own personal thoughts it was before the king silent prayer and God answered God will answer your prayer chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 4 chapter 4 verse 4 hear oh our God for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity that's prayer verse 9 nevertheless nevertheless we made our prayer unto our God challenges came difficulties came and it says nevertheless we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch watch and pray pray and watch we set a watch against them day and night because of them. Verse 20. In verse 20, in what place thereof ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort hither unto us. Our God shall fight for us. Confidence in prayer, confidence in God our God will fight for us. God who does not slumber, God who does not sleep, he will not slumber at a time of your trouble. Short prayer, God will answer. Single sentence prayer, God will answer. A prayer that is coming from your heart and you send it like a text, just short and simple, straightforward in your life of answered prayer, your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 5, verse 15. Chapter 5, verse 15. But the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine beside forty shekels of silver yea even their servants bear rule over the people but so did i not because of the fear of god that's why he had a confidence to say in verse 19 think upon me my god for good that's prayer think upon me and whatever i'm going through and you see that the challenges are beyond me. Think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I've done for these people. Your labor of yesterday has been recorded now. Your activities of last year for the goodness of the people of God has been recorded now. Your counsels, your prayer, your help, the good you do to other people, even when nobody sees it, is be recorded down. And the Lord, at the right time, will repay you in Jesus' name. Chapter 6, verse 9. Chapter 6, verse 9. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the word, that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. You didn't say amen to that one. Yeah. Say it with me. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. The people who pray like that short prayer when there is weakness or frailty coming in, you will not be weak. The Lord will strengthen you. Verse 14, verse 14, my God, think upon, think thou upon Tobiah, Shambhalaj, according to these their works, and on the prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets that would 
have put me in fear. He's saying, God, watch over me. They want me to tremble. They want me to be afraid and seek of them and stop them before they get to me. He'll stop them before they get to you. Amen. Chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 8, verse 6, it says, And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered. And the people of God here answered, Amen, Amen. With the lifting up of their hands, and they bowed their heads, and they worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Chapter 9, verse 3. Chapter 9, verse 3. And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of the Lord, their God, one fourth of the day. And another fourth part of the day, they confessed and worshipped the Lord their God. They stood up upon the stairs of the Levites, Jeshua, and Banai, and Kadmiel, and Sheba Nair, and Bena, and Bonai, and Sherebiah, and Bani, and Shenani, and they cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. That's prayer. They cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. They were not saying we were praying and then they were dozing and then sleeping. Your prayer will not be a sleepy prayer. Active prayer. Fervent prayer. Answerable prayer. Verse 32. Now, therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God, who keepeth covenant and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee. That's prayer. Let not my trouble seem little before thee. Let not my challenge seem little before thee. It will take care of you. I'll take care of that problem. Chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 22. Chapter 13, verse 22. And I commanded the Levites that they shall cleanse themselves and that they shall come and keep the gates and to sanctify the Sabbath day. Here is the prayer. Here is your prayer. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this also, and spare me. It will spare you from trouble. It will spare you from calamity. It will spare you from the effort and the energy and the cruelty of your enemies in Jesus' name. And spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. That's Nehemiah, that's you today. Point number three now, persevering messengers rewarded. Perverted messengers forsaken forever and ever. You will not be forsaken. The Lord will remember you. The Lord will reward you. As you persevere, persevering messengers rewarded let's come back to nehemiah chapter one i'm reading from verse one nehemiah chapter one and we're looking at verse one we're looking at nehemiah chapter one verse one the words of nehemiah the son of hakaliah and it came to pass in the month she slew in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan the palace, that Anani, one of my brethren, came, and he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that were escaped, which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. 
and he said unto me, the remnant that had left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. And the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and fasted and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Join that with chapter 2, verse 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of Ataxes and the king, that wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time such in his presence, wherefore the king said unto me, why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. Then I was so afraid. As we look at chapter 1, verse 1, it says, It was in the month of Chislew. As we look at chapter 2, verse 1, in the month of Nisan, those months are four months apart. And when he heard, he mourned, he was sad. Four months after, he was still sad. And he was still praying continually for those four months. Number one, perseverance in prayer. Perseverance in prayer. When you start praying, and you want the glory of God to come until that glory comes, until God opens the way and the glory of God floods in. You're persistent, persevering in prayer. Number two, look at chapter 2, verse 17. Chapter 2, verse 17. Then said I unto them, You see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lies waste, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Come, and let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we be not a reproach. Then I told them of the good hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And he said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Number two, perseverance in purpose. The purpose why he left Shushan, why he came to Jerusalem. The goal, the thing he pursued was that the walls would be built up. And until that time, traveling a long way from his place to the place of duty, he kept persevering in purpose. What's it in your life that the Lord has called you to? That you started with a good purpose. Do you still have that mind and that purpose? Number one, perseverance in prayer. Number two, perseverance in purpose. Come to chapter three. Chapter 3, I'm going to point something to you here. Chapter 3, as you look at this, there's one word, repaired, repaired, repaired. Mark that as we go on. Chapter 3, verse 4, next unto them, tell me, repaired Miramos. Verse 5, and next unto them, the techwites, what did they do? They repaired. Look at verse 6. Moreover, the old gate, tell me, repaired Jehoiada. 
verse 7 next unto them repaired Melatia. And then in verse 8, next unto them, that's the word again, repaired Uziel. Verse 9, next unto them, repaired, that's the word again, Rephahiah. And then in verse 10, next unto them, repaired Jediah. Verse 11, it goes on to say that Mekhaja, the son of Harim and Hashop, and the son of Pastor Moab repaired the other piece. As you go on, this verse, they repaired, they repaired, they repaired. Your hand will not be taken away from the world. Number three, perseverance in performance. Perseverance in performance. You are a doer, a doer of the word, a doer of the work. You will never fail. You will not be tired. You will not be weary. You'll be a repairer of the breaches in Jesus' name. Chapter 4 now, chapter 4, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse 6. So built we the wall. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Look at verse 11. Verse 11, and our adversary said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. Verse 17, they which build it on the wall, and they which bear the burdens, with those that laid it, every one with one of their hands, every one with one of their hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. With one hand, they were doing the work. With the other hand, they were holding a weapon. Number four, perseverance under pressure. Perseverance under pressure. Nehemiah and the men around him were not people to bulge and people to collapse under pressure. They persevered under pressure. Chapter 5, I read from verse 7. Chapter 5, verse 7, Then I consulted with myself, and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, He exerts usury, every one of his brother. And I set a great assembly against them. Verse 11, in verse 11, restore, I pray you, to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their oliviers, and their houses, also the hundredth part of the money, and of the corn, the wine, the oil, that ye exert of them. Then said they, we will restore them. And we will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priest and I took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Number five, perseverance in protecting the poor. Perseverance in protecting the poor. We need that today. When those who do not have any voice, any finance, any position, any contacts in our church, when they feel oppressed and they are not answered, they are not taken care of, like all the people are taken care of, that a Nehemiah will rise up. I said a Nehemiah will rise up and protect the poor and not allow the poor to say i have nobody i have jesus but the people the jesus people 
they're not defending me will persevere in protecting the poor in Jesus name chapter 6 verse 1 now it came to pass when Sambalat, Tobiah, Agisham, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I builded the wall, and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors of the gates that Sambalat and Geshem said unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, Tell me somebody there. The new day, Nehemiah, I said, Tell me. You are doing a great work. So I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down unto you? Yet the saints unto me four times after they sought, and I answered them after the same manner. Verse 11. In verse 11, and I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am will go into the temple to hide his life? I will not go in. Number seven or number six, perseverance under persecution. Perseverance under persecution. You will not yield to them. You will not surrender to them. To surrender is to surrender the work of God to the enemy. To surrender your crown and your reward to the enemy, it will not be done. Amen. Chapter 6, verse 12. Chapter 6, verse 12. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but he, prof he pronounced this prophecy against me for to buy and Sambalat had hired him, hired prophet, prophesying against Nehemiah. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report that they might reproach me. Verse 14, my God. Think thou upon Tobiah and Sambalat, according to these works, and on the prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets, they hired many of them, that would have put me in fear. So the wall was finished. So, tell me, in the twenty-fifth day of the month Elul, in fifty and two days, number seven, perseverance despite false prophecy. Perseverance despite false prophecy. And then, chapter eight, chapter eight. Reading from verse 8, so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the saints and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is the Tashatha governor, Ezra, the priest, the scribe, and the Levites taught the people. Taught the people. Number 8. Perseverance in preaching. Perseverance in preaching. Chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 3. Chapter 13, verse 3. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all 
the mixed multitude. They separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. Number nine, perseverance with purging for purity. Perseverance, purging for purity. You are a man of passion, woman of passion, boy, girl of passion, the Lord will remember you. A man of prayer, a woman of prayer, a boy, a girl of prayer, the Lord will renew your strength. You are a man of perseverance, a woman of perseverance, You'll never give up a boy persevering, a girl persevering. You persevere in prayer. You persevere in purpose. You persevere in performance. You persevere under pressure. You persevere in protecting the poor. You persevere under persecution. You persevere despite false prophecy. You persevere in preaching. You persevere in purging for purity. You are the man. You are the woman. You are the boy, you are the girl. The Lord will never forget you. Today, he'll remember you. Anytime you're at a crossroad, he'll remember you. Anytime you face a challenge, he'll remember you. Whenever you pray, he will remember you. Chapter 13, verse 14. Remember me, oh my God. God. Remember me, oh my God, concerning this and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices there of verse 22 the last line, last part there, remember me, oh my God, concerning this also and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. The calamities of the world will not touch you. Accidents of the world will not touch you. They will spare your life. Verse 31, the last line, Remember me, O oh my God, for good. Say that, remember me, O oh my God, for good. Rise up and tell the Lord, is about to remember you now. All the prayers you have been praying before, He's kept that in a bottle and now he's going to pour it down. Blessings will be poured now upon you. I said blessings will be poured now upon you. The favor of God will be poured down upon you. The glory of God will come upon your life. And every good thing that you have, the purpose and the plan and the pursuit, you'll be an achiever. You'll be more than a conqueror. Tell the Lord, remember me. He will remember you.